Coming up on the Blessings Connection. I want this morning for you to see the value of having the awe of God in your house. God will allow me today. I, I want you to walk home today and I want you to say I need the awe. I want to use that as a title. Somebody here? Somebody here? Sin for the all. We need the presence, power of God in our life. That's how you feel this morning. Would you shout? Would you shout? Amen. Amen. There's a purpose in life while we're living. We share a common goal to make it to heaven. Shining our lights so others might see. We've got a purpose in life. We're working hard to be with you. God has blessed me to have many an opportunity to set my feet in the land of Israel. It has been a joy for me each time I journey to Israel, but on one of my earlier travels, outside the wall in Jerusalem, I believe it was by the Damascus Gate, there was diggings going on. There was an excavation going on. And I asked somebody, why are they digging here? The answer came back, they are looking for the all of the covenant. The all of the covenant was a small box made of a K of wood. It had gold on the outside and gold on the inside. It was approximately four feet long, two and a half feet wide, and two and a half feet deep. Within this box, within this coffin, within this sacred box, was the unbelievable agreement that Jehovah God made with the people of Israel. It was their covenant agreement. It was their contract. You see, God had sent Moses up Mount Sinai, and when Moses came down Mount Sinai the first time, he saw the children of Israel in disarray. He took the covenant. He took the Ten Commandments and he broke them. But this time on the second time, God said, I, I need you to make a box. Yes, so, the Ark of the Covenant symbolized God's presence. It was located in the tabernacle, and not just any place in the tabernacle, it was located in the most holies of holies of the tabernacle. It symbolized that the one who created the earth, the sky, the moon, the one who did it all, came to reside with his man. The Ark of the Covenant was used as the Israelites wandered through the wilderness. You've heard about the cloud. You've heard about the fire. The cloud and the fire was led by the Ark of the Covenant as they moved through the wilderness. It was the Ark of the Covenant when the children of Israel arrived at the River Jordan and did not know how they were going to cross. And God Almighty told them to let the priest carry the Ark. And when they would step
step in the water with the Ark of the Covenant, the waters would roll back. It was the Ark of the Covenant that when Joshua got ready to take the walls of Jericho down, God said, let them march. It was the Ark of the Covenant that let them feel that God is here. I'm not by myself. My God is here. Somehow, the Ark of the Covenant was lost, it seems, forever with the Babylonian invasion. When the Babylonians invaded Israel and invaded Jerusalem, everything that was holy was destroyed. And so many scholars believe that the Ark of the Covenant was demolished. Others believe that Solomon had a romantic affair with Bathsheba. And Bathsheba's son, and Ethiopia came and grabbed the ark himself. And so if today you Google the ark of the covenant, someone will show you that it is located in Ethiopia. Some people say, no, it's not in Ethiopia. It was too valuable to America. America stole it, and it is somewhere in the archives of the Smithsonian. Can I tell you? Nobody really knows where the Ark of the Covenant is. But can I tell you that all of us need the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me this morning. Uh, I, I want to suggest to you, and the first point if you're trying to outline this sermon, is that we need the Ark of the Covenant for every journey, every day. Somebody shout, we need the Ark. We need the ark. Look at this passage again with me. The Bible says David conferred with each of his officers, the commanders of thousands and the commanders of hundreds, he then said to the whole assembly of Israel, if it seems good to you, if it is the will of the Lord of our God, let us send word far and wide to the rest of the people throughout the territories of Israel, also to the priests and Levites who are with them in their own towns and pasture lands to come and join us. Let us. Bring the ark of our God back to us. For we did not inquire of it during the reign of Saul. The whole assembly agreed to do this because it seemed right to the people. Come here for a second. It was back in the days of Eli, the priest, that the Israelites decided that the Ark of the Covenant was so valuable that if they would carry the Ark of the Covenant with them, they would win any kind of confrontation they were in. So Eli's sons ran back to the tabernacle, and when they ran back to the tabernacle, they grabbed the Ark of the Covenant. But when they went to battle with the Ark of the Covenant, guess what? God was not with them. I want to tell somebody today that's trying to make it. You need God. We need God every day of our lives. Just as then we need the presence of God. Just as then God has been removed from his place. You want to know why so much stuff is coming apart in the world? It's because God has been removed from his place.
We need God in our homes. We need God in the schoolhouse. We need God at our jobs. We need God in our hearts. You, 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 you want to have peace in your life? Talk back to me. You want to have prosperity in your life? Talk back to me. You want to have joy in your life? Talk back to me. And we need. We need. God in our life. You cannot believe how powerful God is. And if God is in our life, if God is in our life, if God is in our life, he can fix anything. What you dealing with today? What you dealing with today? Talk back to me. What you dealing with today? Whatever you're dealing with, I'm telling you, God is big enough, strong enough, and bad enough to deal with it. I love, love the passage. Isaiah, Isaiah 40, verse 12 through 14, he starts to describe God. And I, I need you to look at the passage. I need you to listen to the passage. Isaiah 40, verse 12 through 14, it's describing God and his power. The Bible says, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Oh, you didn't, you didn't hear me because that's a shout moment right there. You, you mean God is so powerful, God is so awesome that in the hollow of his hand, he can hold the Pacific Ocean, the Mediterranean Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean in the hollow of his hand. All with the breath of his hand, he marked off the I, I think I, I think I put the sun here. I think I put a star here. What are you doing, God? Creating it in the hollow of my hand. That's how bad I am. Who has held the dust of the earth in a basket? What a God we have. Weighed the mountains on the scale and the hills in the mountains. Coming up on the Blessings Connection. Anybody here want to be happy? Let me hear you shout amen. Anybody here want some peace in your life? Let me hear you shout amen. Anybody here want some happiness in your life? Shout amen. Anybody who wants some fulfillment in their life, shout amen. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom. Go for the ark and not the gospel. This world that you and I are in is spinning totally out of control. Don't tell me what college you went to. Don't tell me what degree you have. Don't tell me how much money you have in the bank. Tell me, do you have God? Hello, my name is Wanda S. Cook and I have the distinct honor of being the principal of the Garden Oaks Christian Academy. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 22.6 to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We are elated, parents, that you have chosen the Garden Oaks Christian Academy to help nurture, educate, and provide spiritual guidance for your child. The main components of the Goka Preschool program are social and emotional development. Our preschool teachers spend a great deal of time teaching the children how to share, take turns, interact, and make friends. Children also spend the day developing language, phonics, and reading skills through developmentally appropriate interactive instruction. Our elementary program is comprised of a strong academic and Christ-centered curriculum. Christian values, godly teachers, small classroom sizes, 
dress and conduct standards, and mostly love and support. We wish to express our gratitude to all of our many supporters for your prayers, financial contributions, and encouragement. We wish to thank the Garden Oaks Church of Christ and the elders for their major contributions. We especially wish to express our gratitude to the parents of our students, for without them, GOKA's mission could not be fulfilled. Love and sunshine, yeah. You can go on and let it rain. Love, love, love and sunshine. Hey, I just want to take a moment. I, I know you're right in the middle of the program, and I appreciate it. And that's why I jumped in. I want to say thank you. Week after week after week, you open your homes, you open your heart, and you hear the message. It's my prayer that we're blessing you. And, and I know many times people reach out to us and they're looking for a way to bless us because we've blessed them. And so we're created an avenue that you can bless us as we bless you. At the bottom of the screen is the post office box. And so if you'd like to partner with us as we share the word around this city, around this state, around the world, please feel free to. We appreciate the opportunity to bless you. God bless. Who has hell the dust of the earth? in a basket. What a God we have! Weigh the mountains on the scales and the hills in the balance. Who can fathom the spirit of the Lord or instruct? Who, who, who's going to instruct the Lord about counseling? Whom did the Lord consult to enlighten him? Who taught him? What astronomy class did God take? What biology professor did he talk to before he put our bodies together? Our God is an awesome God. Somebody ought to shout amen. amen. Ark of the covenant symbolized the power of God. David says, David says I'm going to a new level. I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving to a new level, but I got to have God with me. Oh, I, I, I'm on top of the world now. I'm king, but I still got to have God with me. The Bible says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you. Anybody here want to be happy? Let me hear you shout amen. Yeah. Anybody here want some peace in your life? Let me hear you shout amen. Yeah. Anybody in here want some happiness in your life? Shout amen. Yeah. Anybody here want some fulfillment in their life? Shout amen. Yeah. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom. Go for the ark and not the gospel. This world that you and I are in is spinning totally out of control. You watch the news? I watch the news. There's a name, Ron Haskell. It's like it's spinning out of control. How could a man kill six of his relatives? Execution style. What, they do nothing? But you know you and I need the power of God in our lives because this world is spinning out of control and if God doesn't protect us, if God is not with us, we cannot make it by ourselves. Don't tell me what college you went to. Don't tell me what degree you have. Don't tell me how much money you have in the bank. Tell me, do you have God? Point two. Point two. When we, when we sin for the Lord, we must sin for it the right way. Yeah. 
Somebody shout the right way. Shout again the right way. I want the all, but, but, but I want to send for the all the right way. I don't want to send for the all my way. I want to send for the all the right way. Somebody shout the right way. Go back to the passage. So David assembled all Israel from Shahar River in Egypt to Labor Huff to bring the ark of God from Kirath Jerem. David and all Israel went to Bala of Judah, Kirith Jimim, to bring up from there the ark of God, the Lord, who is enthroned between the cherubim, the ark that is called by the name. They moved the ark of God from Abinadad's house on a... They moved the ark of the covenant of God on a new car with Uzziah and Ahiah guiding it. David and all the Israelites were celebrating with all their might before God, with songs, with harps, with lyres, with timbers, with cymbals, with trumpets. When they came to the threshing floor of Kidon, Uzziah reached out his hand to study the ark because the oxen stumbled, the Lord's anger. Burn against Isaiah because he didn't do what God asked him to do. He struck him down because he had put his hand on the ark. So he died there before the Lord. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzziah. And to this day, the place is called Perez Uzziah. Uh, now, 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 give me a second. I'm going to the all. Give me a second. Give me a second. We'll talk about Isaiah. We, we'll talk about what's wrong. But can you just stay right there in that particular text? And I want to show you what's right. You got to see David. David pulls all of his leaders together. David sends word through all of the land from the northern border to the southern border. If you are in 2 Samuel chapter 6 where this story is recounted, Samuel says there are 30,000. 30,000 people present because David is going to respect God and the covenant that God had with his people. The Bible says they had all kinds of instruments. The Bible says David was praising God with all his heart. The people, the 30,000 people. Oh, I'm going to the bad, but just stay here with the good for a second. I, I, I need you to see that David was praising God. I, I need you to see that the people of God were praising God. What are you trying to say, preacher? Too many times. People of God come to the church house. Won't open their mouths to sing. There is no excitement in the worship service. If David came to our worship service, some of y'all would have a fit. It's almost as if in your mind you come to a funeral service. Can I suggest to you today, this is a celebration. Our Savior got up. What would it profit me? What would it profit you if we got all of the things we wanted? We, we got the right job. We got the right income. We got the right house. We got the right car. We got all of the things we wanted and then lost our soul. That's sad. And, 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 and so you really want to know what the Blessing Connection program is all about? It, it's about helping me. It's about helping you. It's about helping men and women 
be able to stand before God and hear God say in the life to come, well done. Don't you want to hear God say, well done? I want to hear God say, well done, our good and faithful servant. And so as you watch these videos of people getting baptized, understand what baptism really means. Baptism is really a symbolic act. It represents the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It, it represents the fact that I have given my life, I am being buried, I am being raised again to live a new life in Christ Jesus. It's, it's the opportunity for me to stand before God and hear God say, the substitution death of Jesus Christ, I no longer see you, I see him. It's Christ taking my place. It's not about my works, it's about the grace of God and that God sent his only begotten son. And so when you see someone get baptized, what they're really saying is that I've heard the good news that God sent his only begotten son. I believe that Jesus is God's son. I will confess with my mouth proudly that Jesus Christ is the son of God. I will repent of my sin. I no longer want to sit on the throne. I want Jesus to sit on the throne. I'm going down. I am getting baptized because I want to be able to say it's no longer I who lives in me. It's Christ who lives in me. That's what the passage is about in Romans chapter six, verse number four. Let me read it to you. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the father, we, that's you and I, we too may live a new life. Well, that's the plan of salvation. And for today, that's the Blessing Connection. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Our service times begin on Sunday morning with Bible study at 9 a.m. with classes for all ages, morning worship, 10 a.m., evening worship, 5 p.m., and on Wednesdays, our midweek Bible study begins at 7 p.m. Please come and be our guest. If you are calling to request prayer, please dial 1-855-45-CONNECT. Our Twitter account is at Connect With Him. If you would like to purchase, call 1-855-45-CONNECT. See what goes on